the pain would just strike. It just stops you in your tracks. I just didn't feel like I could tell people, like, oh, I'm actually going home now because I just shat myself. <laughs> My doctor said, you're going to end up with a stoma bag. It's not a question of if, it's when. Growing up, I was very outgoing. I liked to perform, do musicals at home. I was very loud and proud, I guess. My dream since I was probably three was to be a police officer. I'd wave to them, stop them. I'd carry around an A4 book and get them to write their signature in there. I probably started noticing symptoms when I was 15, where I'd be like, oh, my stomach's a bit funny and I'd spend about an hour on the toilet. It got to the point that most mornings I'd stop at a chemist to get like anti-diarrhea medicine so that I could get through school. I was quite embarrassed about like my symptoms. So generally I'd mask it as like vomiting or something. Going out to parties, sleepovers, like I just couldn't really keep up with those kind of things. When I was 17, I worked at Baker's Delight and trying to like bend down and pick things up while trying to manage like not like pooing. I had no idea what was going on. Mum and Dad didn't know what was going on. The doctors didn't know what was happening either. I was just getting really sick. I'd lost a lot of weight. The pain would just strike and even if I was at the shops doing shopping, I'd end up on the floor in tears crying. It wasn't until I was 19 years old that I found out that I had Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is inflammation of the digestive tract. So all the way from your mouth right down to your bum pretty much um, can be ulcerated, um, bleeding, inflamed. It was nice to have a diagnosis and straight away I went on steroids and immunosuppressants as well, biologic drugs. The steroids were great because they made me feel good. I put on weight, which was good. I was already at uni um, studying policing. To get into the police force, you could do two years of uni. And then you had to go to Goulburn for six months. I thought, yeah, I can definitely do this. So I started training for that. Um, I worked really hard and tried to get really fit um, and somehow juggled it with all these new medications. Like they were great because they were helping for a little while but then they'd stop working so I'd change to the next one and be back on steroids and then it would work for a period of time then it would stop working. I got something called moon face where your face just swells up. I'd be in hospital getting infusions which would take out a whole day again always having to know where the toilets were and restricting what I ate so that I didn't have to go to the bathroom. Yeah I was just so tired I was running on empty every day literally. <laughs> At the time, I was convincing myself that I was well enough and I could still get a degree, despite my parents saying, I don't think you can. And then a few days before I should have been going to Goulburn, I got a call saying, no, you're too sick, you can't come. I like fell to the ground, like I was just like crying so hard. I don't think I've ever cried so hard in my life. Yeah, just, it's all that I wanted. I didn't have any other aspirations. That was my dream over. My gastro wanted to keep pushing medication and steroids, but I was just so tired of it. We looked at surgery options, eventually got the okay, found a surgeon and had half of my large intestine removed to try and give me a little bit of relief. After my surgery, I was able to fall pregnant. Didn't want to wait in case the Crohn's came back. I ended up having Arthur at 37 weeks. He came out healthy, he was fine. I was told that the surgery should give me five to 10 years of relief, but it didn't even give me one. <laughs> the pain with my Crohn's as it started to come back, it was horrible. I just kind of became a bit of a shell of a person. 
I hardly went out, constantly in pain. I was just so sick of the medications not working. Yeah, it's just really isolating. My doctor, he said, you're going to end up with a stoma bag. It's not a question of if, it's when. That's when your intestine comes out of your stomach and essentially you put a bag over the top of it that collects your waste. I thought this is going to ruin my life. I thought I would be gross. My husband wouldn't find me attractive because I poo in a bag on my stomach, but it was the last resort. Having my stoma bag has changed my life completely. My son Arthur calls it stomy. He'll say, does stomy like this food? Now I can go to a cafe, have a coffee and not have to know where the bathroom is. I'm not in pain anymore. Just being able to do what I want to do and have energy to do that is really profound and I'm still getting used to that. Being able to commit to going to things I can say, yep, yeah, see you in six months, and I know that I'll be okay in six months. I still would love to be a police officer down the track. I'll try again, but right now, I actually get to live and enjoy my family, which I've missed out on doing. I just want to be a good mum, and I can actually run around with my son now and do my hobbies and, yeah, live my life. I think what I want to would have wanted to hear when going through like the thick of Crohn's. Yeah, I guess just to hang on, it can get better. I'm actually living and it's taken 11, 12 years, but I'm there and it was worth the wait to get there.